Brace yourself, October is about to get tail blazing. Not one, not two, but three comets are heading towards us in October in what's shaping up to be an amazing month for astronomers and astrophotographers. And if you're excited, leave a comment below. Okay, that was the last point in this video. Two of the comets are expected to reach naked eye visibility, which is really exciting. And one of those comets may trigger a small meteor shower. I think I know a particular night where we can see all three of these comets in the night sky, which is really exciting. Before we dive in, I want to mention that all of these brightness predictions of these comets are just predictions. The comets have a mind of their own. They can not be as bright or they can be brighter. Only one way to find out. In this video, I'll talk a little bit about all three comets and I'll show you how to add these comets in Stellarium so that you can track them yourself from wherever you are. I'll also go over how I took these images of Comet Suchinshan Atlas in 2024 because I'll basically be planning to do the same thing this year with these three comets if the weather allows me to. So let's dive in and talk about the comet that I'm most looking forward to, which is Comet C2025A611. This was discovered on January 3rd, 2025 by the Mount Lemmon Survey in Arizona. This comet has an orbital period of about 1300 years, meaning that the last time it was in the inner solar system is when Bernie Sanders was born. Lemmon makes its closest approach to Earth around October 21st, passing about 90 million kilometers away. And according to the Sky Live, it's expected to reach a magnitude of about 4.8 which means that it should be visible to the naked eye under certain dark sky conditions. I believe Kami Suchinshan Atlas at its brightest was around magnitude three, which I was able to see from my Bortle 8 neighborhood, which was really cool. And even if it's not naked eye visible, it's going to be a really wonderful binocular target. For the first half of October, you can spot Lemon toward the northeast before dawn. By mid-month, Lemon transitions into the evening sky and around closest approach, you can catch it after sunset in the northwestern sky. For me here, it'll be about 30 to 40 degrees from the horizon. Now let's talk about the second comet, Comet C2025R2 Swan. So this is the comet that could trigger a small meteor shower from October 4th to the October 6th as the Earth moves through its debris field, which is really, really exciting until you realize that the full moon in October happens on October 6th. So this comet was discovered on September 11th by SOHO's SWAN instrument. SOHO is short for Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, and SWAN is short for Solar Wind Anisotropies, which is used to detect hydrogen in the solar system. After the discovery, astronomers realized that some people took images of this dating back to August 11th, which is really exciting. It's almost a month before an actual space probe. And the precover information helped us refine its orbital information. SWAN will make its closest approach to Earth on October 20th to the 21st, coming within just 40 million kilometers of Earth, which is quite close as comets go. And if those dates sound familiar, it's the exact same time that Comet Lemon is going to be at its closest point to Earth. So we're going to look at the night sky and we're going to see two bright comets at the exact same time, which is like, wow. And according to live science, it could reach a magnitude of four, which is the same as Comet Lemon. So we could see two parts of the sky at the exact same time and see two different comets which is kind of mind blowing. Now sources for the brightness of Comet Swan varies. The Earth Sky website says that it could go up to magnitude nine, which is far dimmer than magnitude four. But like I said in the beginning of this video, brightness predictions are just predictions. There's no way to tell what's going to happen with this comet until it happens. From the Northern Hemisphere, your best chance to see this is after sunset in mid to late October. Just look west to southwest. It'll be near the Milky Way galaxy. Now the third comet we're going to talk about is Comet C2025K1 Atlas. This one reaches perihelion or its closest point to the sun on October 8th. While it's not predicted to be as bright as Comet Lemon or Comet Swan, it's still predicted to reach a brightness of about magnitude 5 or 6, which is still pretty bright and if you're in really dark skies, it could be naked eye visible, but it's an excellent binocular target. It will get nearest to Earth at the end of November, but it'll still be brightest in October when it gets closest to the sun. This comet will be best to see in the Northern Hemisphere before sunrise. So it'll be pretty close to the sun, so you won't have a lot of time to observe it. And the best time to see all of these comets at the same time is probably the evening of October 20th to the morning of October 21st. I'm really hoping for clear skies, and now that I'm really hoping for it, I'm probably not going to get it. But I hope that at least somebody from across the world who will watch this video has the opportunity to see it. If you take pictures, I would really like to see them. October 20th to the 21st will be the best time to see it, but a week before, a week after is going to be good enough, as long as it's not a day like today. And the best thing about October 21st is that it's during the new moon, so the comet tails won't have to fight the moonlight. 
And around 7 p.m. on October 20th, both Comet Lemon and Comet Swan are in the sky at the exact same time. And with Comet Lemon expecting to be around magnitude 3 according to Stellarium, Comet Swan can reach Mag 4 according to a few other sources, but not Stellarium at the moment. Then we go over to the morning on the 21st around 6 a.m. and you can see Comet K1 Atlas right next to Comet Lemon. So that should be a really exciting night. I'm using Stellarium here to show you and adding them here is really easy. So if you don't see these options, let's quickly take a look at how to add these here. On the left hand side, you want to click on configuration window or click F2. There are a couple ways to add comets, but I usually direct people to come through this window because sometimes if you go to the plugins tab, scroll all the way down to solar system editor, this is not checked. So they can't add it the other ways. So if this is not checked for you, check this box, restart Stellarium, and then you should have the configure option here that's available for clicking. Once you click on this, in this tab here, you go to solar system and then you click on import orbital elements in MPC format. Over here, you want to make sure the select the type is selected to comets. Some people forget to do that and then you don't see the source. Under the source, you click on Gideon, Van Buiten, and Comets. This should be on here by default, but if it's not, I'll post this link in the description below so you can copy and paste this, click on add this URL to bookmarks, and give it a name so that you can come back to it later on. So once you have this selected, you click on get orbital elements. It takes a second to load, but here you can now search for those objects. So you can click on update only the orbital elements if you need to, if you already have the objects here. You can also click on override up existing objects only, but I'm going to click here. I'm going to search for our three comments. So we have, you know, C2025, A6, Lemon. I'm going to check this box, R2, Swan. And finally, K1, Atlas. So these are all here. These are all checked. And when I scroll down, you can see that, yep, all three are checked. And I click on Add Objects. It could take a second to load, but once it does, you can close that, close this, close this, close this. And if we click on Find on the left-hand side, you click on Control F or F3. I already have them selected here, but you can, you'll can. you then be able to search for C2025. Find your objects. Swan. There you go. It's there. I can zoom in if I want to. Let's zoom back out. Swan is there. Let's do lemon. Lemon is there. Let's zoom in. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then we have K1 Atlas, which is going to be below the horizon. So if I bring up my date and time, if I go to the morning, there we go. There is Comet Swan or Comet Atlas. There you go. If you have Sky Safari, the app is automatically loaded with all three comets orbital information. So you can use that app and you can have a sky map to go with you on the go. Now let's talk a little bit about how to observe and image these comets. I'm really hoping that comets Lemon and Swan are both naked eye objects because I absolutely loved seeing Comet Su Jinshan Atlas last year from my Bordel 8 neighborhood, which was amazing. And even if they're not, and you have a set of small binoculars, observing these comets will be much easier. Any kind of binoculars will help because any binocular is better than no binoculars. Now, something like this is overkill, but if you have it, use it. Finding these comets in the sky could get challenging, so I would recommend using Stellarium or Sky Safari and finding out where they may be right before you head out. Try and take note of any bright stars or bright objects such as Venus that will be near them because you can use them to guide you to the sky. We call this process star hopping. And check out this video I made last year showing you exactly how you can use objects like Venus to find comets before everybody else. And this time around, Venus will actually be around to help me find both Comet Atlas and Comet Lemon in the morning. Now, imaging these comets can get a little bit tricky. Comets move much faster than their background stars, so doing super long exposures can make them look smudgy. And the closer they are, or the faster they move in relation to the background stars. So the way to get around that is to track on the comet. So there are ways you can guide on the comet where your mount moves a little bit faster and tracks those comets through the sky. But that'll actually give you some star trails, which isn't always desirable unless that's what you really want to do. So my recommendation if you don't want star trails, you don't want a smudgy comet, is to take shorter exposures. I recommend try out 30 seconds at most and see how that goes. I did exactly that for Kama Suchinshan Atlas last year and it worked really well for me. I used a 60 millimeter refractor and an Astrocam for that shot. I also took this time lapse with my Samyang 135 millimeter lens with a Canon T5i DSLR. And the exposures ranged from 0.8 seconds to 6 seconds depending on how bright the sky was. And this was a 4 second exposure for my 60mm refractor and a Canon camera. No stacking with either of these. 
And if you have small smart telescopes like the Seastar S30 or the Dwarf 3, these would be perfect telescopes since comet tails can get really long. Of course, these aren't prescriptions, so you shouldn't follow them exactly how I tell you because your camera will be different, your location will be different. You will need to spend at least a few minutes testing exposure to see what will work for you. If you find a technique that works best for you, consider sharing it with the community so that we can learn from each other in the comments section below. I already used that pun. And if you take any images, consider joining our Discord server. The invite link is in the description. We would love to see your images. And if you'd like to support this channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or support me on Buy Me A Coffee. Good luck to everyone. I hope October is an amazing comet-filled month and I wish you all a few skies.